So you're ready to dive into Arabic, huh? Using pronunciator too. That's awesome. <laughs> Arabic is such a fascinating language. But um, let's be honest, the sentence structure. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit of a challenge, especially if you're coming from English. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's definitely unique. One of the biggest things that trips up new learners is that Arabic actually has two main ways to order the words in a sentence. Two ways. Okay, now I'm really interested. Yeah. So the first one, and this is probably the one that's the most different from English, is verb, subject, object. Verb, subject, object. Yeah. And it's really common in classical Arabic and modern standard Arabic, like what you would see if you're reading formal writing or, you know, like news broadcasts and things like that. So instead of saying like the boy ate the apple, it would be. Yeah, it would be something like ate the boy the apple. The verb comes first. Wow. But there's a twist. Okay. And spoken Arabic, like everyday conversations, you're going to hear the subject verb object order more often, like what we're used to in English. Wow. So it, it like flips depending on you know like who you're talking to or the situation exactly that's a lot to keep track of it can be yeah at first but you know you're using pronunciator and it has all these audio lessons that can really help you get used to both of those word orders so as you're listening to native speakers you'll start to pick up on those patterns and it'll become more natural okay that's good that's reassuring um speaking of things that are different i've heard about these things called nominal sentences in arabic they sound kind of mysterious i guess yeah, they're pretty interesting. Basically, in those sentences, you won't see a verb in the present tense. Like, it's just implied. Implied. Yeah. Oh, okay. So instead of saying, the weather is beautiful, you just say, what are beautiful? So the verb is, is just, it's just gone. And it's gone. How do you even know what's going on? Context. Context is really key in Arabic. You got to look at the other words, the relationships between the words. It's like a puzzle, figuring out the meaning. I guess that makes sense. Okay, so we've got verb, subject, object in formal settings, and then subject, verb, object in casual settings, and then we've got these verbless sentences. That's that's a lot to keep track of. It is, but honestly, it gets easier with practice, and Pronunciator has some great grammar resources that can really help to break it down. Those grammar explanations are a lifesaver. Yeah. Seriously. Okay, so are those all the curveballs that Arabic sentence structure throws at us or? Well, not quite. There's one more thing. Even within a sentence, Arabic can be flexible with the word order, like to emphasize different parts of an idea. So even though you might typically see verb, subject, object, it can change. Okay. This is interesting, but kind of confusing. Can you give me an example? Sure. Yeah. Let's say you want to say Ahmad went to school. Okay. To emphasize that it was Ahmad who went, you could say Ahmad went to school. Okay. But if you want to highlight the action of going, then you might say went to school Ahmad. So it could be verb, subject, object, or subject, verb, object. Right. How do you know which one to use? It's really a matter of what sounds right in that situation. And that's actually another area where pronunciator can help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The chat bot. You can use it to just, you know, mess around with different word orders, get feedback in real time, and see what works. It's like having a tutor in your pocket. That's pretty cool. So it's not just about, you know, memorizing the rules. It's about kind of getting a feel for the language. Exactly. And the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll become with it. Okay. Arabic is sounding a little less intimidating now. Good. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want. And as you get more comfortable with the basics, we can we can start exploring some of the even more interesting aspects of Arabic sentence structure. Oh, there's more. All right. You've got me hooked. What else is there to uncover about Arabic sentences? Remember how we were talking about how Arabic can be really efficient with its words? Well, sometimes the subject of a sentence isn't even directly stated. It's not. Nope. It's like implied within the verb itself. Implied subjects. Okay, now that sounds like a real challenge. How can you even have a sentence without, you know, a clear subject? Well, think about it this way. Arabic verbs, they're packed with information. They don't just tell you the action, but they also give you clues about who is doing the action. So if a verb is conjugated in a way that indicates a singular masculine subject, you might not need to explicitly say he. So this verb is like doing double duty. Exactly. And that's part of what gives Arabic its flow and elegance. But yeah, it can be a bit confusing for English speakers since we're used to spelling everything out. I can imagine. So if the subject isn't always obvious, how do you figure out, like, who or what is actually doing the action? Context. Context is key. Yeah. You have to look at the surrounding sentences, the overall situation, and kind of piece it together. It's like you're a detective looking for clues. Right. And as you get further along in your pronunciator lessons, you'll find that this process becomes more intuitive. The more you immerse yourself in the language, the better you'll get at recognizing those little hints. That makes sense.
Pronunciator's approach with its real-life dialogues and different learning materials, mm -hmm. it really helps with that, huh? Absolutely. And the grammar explanations and the drills, those are super important, too. They help you understand those verb conjugations and how they relate to the implied subject. Yeah, those grammar drills, they're like a workout for your brain. So we've got this whole verb, subject, object, the subject, verb, object thing going on. Then those verbless sentences and now these hidden subjects. Arabic sentences really keep you on your toes. They do. But remember, it's not about memorizing a bunch of rigid rules. It's about, you know, expressing yourself in a way that's both elegant and efficient. And that's one of the things that makes Arabic so beautiful and rewarding to learn. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. It's almost like there's an art to how Arabic puts sentences together. Exactly. And as you go deeper with pronunciator, you'll start to appreciate those nuances even more. Okay, so we've talked about verb placement, those nominal sentences, implied subjects. What else is there to uncover about Arabic sentence structure? Well, we've only scratched the surface. There's another really important feature in Arabic. Grammatical cases. Grammatical cases. Oh, that sounds a little intimidating. They might seem a bit unfamiliar at first, especially if you're used to a language like English, where word order is everything. But in Arabic, these cases act like little signposts guiding you through the sentence and clarifying the roles of different words. Okay, so break it down for me. What are grammatical cases and how do they work? Basically, it involves adding these special endings, kind of case markers, to nouns and adjectives. Case markers. Yeah, and these markers tell you what function the word has in the sentence. Like, is it the subject, the object, a possessive, and so on. So instead of just relying on the word's position, you look at these markers to figure out what's going on. You got it. It's like a little code within the words themselves. For example, the word for boy in Arabic is walad. Now, if walad is the subject of the sentence, it will have a specific ending called the nominative case. But if it's the object of the verb, it takes on a different ending called the accusative case. So even if the words are in a different order, you can still figure out who's doing what. Exactly. They're like little flags signaling the grammatical role of each word. And that's one reason why Arabic can be so flexible with word order. Wow, this is amazing. So even though Arabic sentence structure might seem complicated, it's actually incredibly precise because of these grammatical cases. It's like this whole other level of meaning. That's a great way to put it. It's like a beautifully designed puzzle where every piece has a specific purpose and fits together perfectly. And once you grasp these cases, you really unlock a deeper level of understanding of Arabic sentence structure. I have a feeling pronunciators' grammar resources are going to be really helpful with this. Definitely. They do a great job of explaining these concepts and giving you examples. And don't forget about the chatbot. You can use it to practice using the right case endings in different sentences, which can really boost your confidence. It's like having a personal grammar coach. Right. So we've got the verb subject object and subject verb object, those verbally sentences. And now we've added grammatical cases. What's next? It feels like we've covered so much about Arabic sentences already. We've talked about verb, subject, object, subject, verb, object, and those nominal sentences, those hidden subjects, and then grammatical cases. Phew. But how can you actually use all this when you're learning Arabic, especially with pronunciator? Well, that's the great thing about pronunciator. It doesn't just throw the rules at you and then say good luck. Hey. It gives you tons of chances to actually use them. Yeah, actually using what you learn is so important. So what are some things pronunciator users can do to really get a handle on Arabic sentence structure? First off, don't forget those grammar resources. They're your best friend. Pronunciator breaks down all these complex structures into smaller chunks that are easier to understand. And they have so many examples, so you can see how it works in real Arabic sentences. Yeah, I love those examples. Any tips on how to use those resources well? Don't be afraid to go back to them over and over as you're learning. Each time you run into a new sentence structure, just take a minute to refresh your memory and see how the rules fit in. It's like having a grammar guide right there with you the whole time. Now, what about the pronunciator chatbot? That's such a cool feature. How can people use that to practice their sentences? The chatbot's like your personal Arabic buddy. You know, you can talk to it anytime, and it's a great way to get comfortable with building different sentences. As you're chatting, really pay attention to how the bot puts its sentences together. Try to spot the verbs, the subjects, the objects, all those things we've been talking about. So you're basically analyzing the language as you go. Exactly. And here's something even better. You can experiment. Try saying things in different word orders. See if you can use a nominal sentence or even throw in some of those grammatical cases. The chat bot will tell you right away if you're doing it right. Wow. So it's like having a personal Arabic tutor. 
We've heard. What about the audio lessons? I mean, they're obviously great for pronunciation and listening, but can they help with sentence structure too? Absolutely. It's all about actively listening. When you're listening to those native speakers, really focus on how they're building their sentences. Pay attention to the word order, the pauses, even the way their voice goes up and down. You'll start to pick up on the little cues that tell you how the sentence is put together. So it's not just about understanding the words, but how they flow together. Right. And here's something fun to try. Repeat the sentences out loud, just like the speaker. It'll help you get those structures in your head and make your own speaking more fluent. Like a workout for your Arabic. Okay, so we've talked about grammar resources, the chat bot, and the audio lessons. Anything else people can do in Pronunciator to master those Arabic sentences? The most important thing is to practice regularly. Make it a habit, even if it's just for a few minutes every day. The more you work with the language and its structure, the more natural it'll become. It's like anything else you learn, practice makes perfect. That's it. And remember, learning a language takes time. It's a journey. Don't be afraid of the challenges, celebrate your successes, and most importantly, have fun. That's great advice. So to sum it all up, even though Arabic sentence structure can seem a bit tricky at first, Pronunciator has so many tools and techniques that can help you really get it. It's all about learning, practicing, and enjoying the process. It's been great talking about this with you and showing everyone how Pronunciator can help them unlock the secrets of Arabic. And for everyone listening, keep exploring, keep practicing, and most importantly, keep having fun with Arabic. It's a beautiful language, and there's so much to discover. Happy learning, everyone.